All right. Oh, praise be to the most high, the holy one of creation. Giving thanks and praise for another day. Um, my name is Amuna Yisrael. This is Solonomics 101. And we have a, I know I'll be saying it, but I'm telling y'all the special treat, man. We have a special treat this evening. Um, and when I heard from the brother and he joined us on the left project and started speaking and then he dropped a bomb on me and I'm like, oh, I got to get you in. So definitely we brought him in today. This is brother JC Hughes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you today? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. You're pretty good? I'm ready. He over there acting real calm, y'all. But let me let me just explain <laughs> something. You understand? We read in the we read in the left project. For those who don't know, it's um earlier on from the beginning of the year, we've been reading the narratives, slaves narratives. And for anybody who hasn't gotten into them, they can become very addicting. So I'm on Amazon like buying everything that I'm not supposed to. Can't get, you know, because I'm like, got to get that one, that one, that one. And so I talked to the brother. And he was like, you know, I'm very interested in slave narratives because my family wrote one. So I was like, you know, what's your family name? You understand what I'm saying? He drops it in my box. And now I'm going to let him have to tell you who his family is. Um, tell us a little bit about the narratives. And just to let you know, I listen to your... I'm not even going to spoil it. I'm not even going to spoil it. Go ahead, brother. I'm going to give you the mic right now and let you come <laughs> forward and introduce yourself because I'm a bit excited right now. Okay, the mic is yours. Right. Um, I'm, I'm J.C. Hughes. I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I just recently moved uh, to Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm here, uh, I'm here to join my, my brothers. Um, you may know a couple of them. I won't, I won't say any names, but you may know a couple of them. And we started, um, uh, well, we didn't start. We restarted or we, um, we restarted the RBG um, Hebrew movement, which goes back to the 1800s. Mm -hmm. uh, we restarted that movement down here. And, um, you know, I moved down here to be closer to them and, you know, and get this thing underway to teach our people and to show them the right way. Hmm. He he's so humble. He just he just you know <laughs> he just gave us. <laughs> he said Hugh. So maybe for those who are not into uh, narratives, can you tell us a little bit about your four parents who are on record everywhere for um, contributing to this very extensive wealth of history that we have called the slave narrative? Okay, there's an interesting twist. Okay. That Thus far, I haven't seen any uh, historians or scholars make the link to. Mm -hmm. But to go to go back farther before uh, Lewis Hughes, which is my great, 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 I don't know how many greats we move, grandfather. He's my, I call him my great father because I don't know how many greats it goes back. Okay. Uh, even before him, um, my family um, history um, starts, well, in America, it starts with... Um, it starts with President Thomas Jefferson. Uh oh. President Thomas Jefferson, um, he owned he owned he owned one of my great 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 I don't know how many greats, grandfather and grandparents. Wow. Um my my great father name was Warmly Hughes. He hmm. was a gardener for Thomas Jefferson. He was born uh, in the seventeen hundreds, like the mid seventeen hundreds. Um, he was a gardener uh, for Thomas Jefferson, and as a child, he worked at the nailery where they where they made they made nails by hand. Mm. Um, the story goes that um, he would he would have young boys making nails, and um, in order to make one nail, it took a thousand hammer strikes. What in the world? And he required he required them to uh, produce um, over three thousand nails per day. So they would be there from sun up. The sundown, uh, uh, making nails. What? Um, yes, and Warmly Hughes, my great father, he's the nephew of Sally Hemings. I can't with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. For the people who are listening, who are just joining us, we're talking about discovering your roots, and we have J.C. Hughes on the line, and he has begun this very, very interesting, I'm interested, as you, if you can't tell, I'm very excited, in discovering your roots. How did you even begin to 
have this conversation or this discovery? Did you always know or what's going on with that? Um, well, I figured out, I figured out long ago that um, in everybody's lives, no matter if you're white, black, whatever, but, but especially for us, when you get to the ages of like maybe 21, between 21 and 30, you have this urge to want to know who you are okay. and where you come from. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily, luckily for me, um, I went to, I attended a Pan-African middle school. Mm. So as far as like Marcus Garvey, Black Wall Street, W. Du Bois, uh, 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 Edward uh, Wilmot Blyton, uh, Martin R. Delaney, I knew about all these people already. I knew about the UNIA. I knew about a lot of the history that wasn't taught in school because my school was a Pan-African school. Okay. The whole curriculum, the whole curriculum was based around it was African, it was African-centered. So I, I knew that much as a, as, at a younger age, but as like all as all kids do, I didn't take it serious right away. It wasn't until I got to the ages of 21, you know, in that age range where I wanted to know who I was. Um, and to start off with, um, I will always ask my, my grandmother, my grandfathers, or, or any of my elders mm -hmm. who were still living, and I would ask them, where do we come from? Who we are? And, um, and with the little information they had, like, I could never get a solid name. I could only get mm -hmm. nicknames. They call my, uh, they call my great, my great, great grandmother Momo. Oh my um, goodness. Um, that was her nickname, you know? Yeah. Um, and she was, and she was one generation removed from slavery. So her mother was a slave. Wow. Um, and I had stories of my, of my great, of my great, great uncles who were slaves. Uh, my grandma used to tell me like, uh, st like actual stories of them uh, working on the railroads. My, my one uncle, he's in the narrative of, of Lewis Hughes. My one uncle, he was working on the railroad tracks and um, he lost two fingers. Wow. And, they made him, and they made him work with, uh, with two fingers still missing. They, they, they made him continue to work. Um, that's a story that my grandmother always told me since I was younger and it stuck with me. Mm. Um, so with the little information they gave me, um, you know, first I looked at my last name, Hughes. Mm -hmm. So me already knowing that, uh, African Americans, the vast majority of us, we get our last names from the slave master. Slave master, correct. And I'm, and I'm thinking like, okay, uh, okay, Hughes, I got to find a plantation with the name Hughes as a, as a plantation owner. So immediately... My grandmother told me that we come from Mississippi. So mm -hmm. I looked all over Mississippi, um, the, the records. Like um, one of the techniques I do is I go to the census records. Yes. The I, go to the court, I go to the court uh, records for like, uh, you know, public records. Great. And I look for the last name. I couldn't find a slave owner by the name Hughes there. Mm -hmm. So um, I had this inclination to go to my public library of my of my of, of wisconsin and go into the um the historical archives of wisconsin you you dating records. now brother you, you <laughs> but also just join us we on the line with jc hughes he telling you how to get up in it you have to be a researcher right now he's in the public library in the records digging it out so for those who just joined us welcome my name is amuna yisrael and like i said you know, cock your ears, keep them open because this is some deep stuff. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. I had to just jump in there for a second. That's OK. But um, I, I will later on once my I have a lecture coming up this Saturday uh, with some other brothers. Um, but once I'm done with that, I plan on putting together a step by step mm -hmm. guide for other people to uh, take the same steps. And you don't have to go through the painstaking things that I have to do to get to it. So. I'm gonna lay out a guide for everybody. I'm gonna post it on Facebook. Um, Beautiful. I can email it to you, so everybody can take those those same steps to try to find whatever they can find. But um, I went down to the public library, and I went to the historical part of the library for the for the state and for the city. Um, first, I started off first I started off statewide, looking for um, the records of my family, any any kind of records, whether it be uh, a death certificate, a uh, newspaper clipping, article, um, whatever. 
Can you hear me? Now I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I can hear you. I can hear you. So, <coughs> um, this research, this research led me to uh, my city records, which is uh, Milwaukee County. It led me to my city records, and um, lo and behold, lo and, lo and behold. Now I'm here. Don't worry. If you see me mouthing right, I'm multitasking because the babies is running up on me. So if you see it go on mute real quick, I'm still listening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm with you. You at the city records. I'm with you. I'm, I'm right. multitasking. Okay. Go ahead. Um, this led me to the city records, and mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I inquired of the librarian the um, the information and the material I was looking for mm -hmm. uh, pertaining to my ancestors. And he had a big smile on his face. Wow. And he said, I have something that I think you will like. Wow. And he, he took me he took me back. Uh we have a you have we, we have a very humongous um historic library downtown Milwaukee, one of the best libraries I ever saw. Like mm. it's it's phenomenal. But um the librarian took me back and he pulled out the actual the actual book. Like the actual, not not a copy, not a reprint. The, the authentic actual book, the, wow. the authentic book, with the dust cover on it, with the um with the parchment paper between you know, between the cover page and everything. He had the white gloves on and everything. It was what? Like, and right there on the cover it says 30 Years a Slave" by Lewis Hughes. Wow. Published, uh, published 1892. I want to say. Wow. Right. Now you know and you're I, gonna I mean, have to read for us when we do this lead project. You know, I gotta plug for a second. You're gonna have to like read the opening chapter for us because this is you know cool. I have it and I plan to read it, and that will be like history. So, you know, like I I've been saying to the people the importance of reading this history, it it, it will open you up and, and give you understanding of the things that we keep grappling for. It's all there. You understand? And, and and for those who took their time to write it in a space and time where that wasn't normal. You understand what I'm saying? Some of these narratives, they wrote it when they were under penalty of death to be found reading right. and writing. We don't understand. It wasn't, ah, oh, you know what, today I'm going to write a text. No. It took some real gusto to do this. So go ahead, brother. Let, let me not uh, be all up in your stuff. Go ahead. So you're... you're, you're <laughs> Your great father, we're going to call him, is Lewis Hughes, and he penned 30 Years of Slave. Everybody, check out 30 Years of Slave. And, and so, go ahead. Tell us more. So, when I discovered the book, um, since the book was historical, I couldn't take it out the library. Right. You had to stay there. Um, I'm not going to say that I took it. I plead the fifth. <laughs> but... Uh-oh. I, uh -oh. <laughs> I stayed... <laughs> I stayed, I, I stayed in the library for days on end, uh, trying to photocopy as much as I could photocopy um, to take home and read it, you know, little by little. Um, right. So I had to, I still had to go to work. I still had, I have kids. I still had things to do. So I, I couldn't just stay there and read the book. Uh, so I photocopied it and um, something told me to look online to see if it was ever republished. Um, mm -hmm. And I found, I, I figured out it was republished, so I purchased um, the republish, um, uh, the republication of the book. Okay. And I also, I also, in the meantime, I didn't have the money right away. I, I also, in the meantime, um, uh, I found a free PDF online. So I said, oh, I'm going to download this, I'm going to read it. Um, and even still today, I haven't read the entire thing because it's so, uh, when I do research, when I read a book, I'm real methodical. Like I, I paid um, close attention to what, what is being said. Details. And I, I, right. You know, I might have to stop and look up a word or I might have to stop and look up, um, <laughs> you know, so okay. I, I haven't still got through the whole thing uh, just yet. But um, hello? You know I'm here. You know I'm okay. here. They, 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 you see, the, like you say, you got babies. They they just wait. They already know what time it is when mommy's in interview mode, and so they try to move around on me. But continue to speak. I'm still here. Right. So I I I, I acquired I acquired um, a hard copy um, from Amazon, um, and 
I downloaded a free copy. Um, but little to my, uh, for my surprise, this story was a famous story. Like it was a big deal. And I, I had no clue it, it was such a big deal. Um, and I was excited that I found it. So, uh, you know, I rushed home. I called my grandma. Like, grandma, I found, um, I found one of your, one of our great uh, ancestors. He wrote a, you know, he wrote an autobiography. And um, right away, my grandmother was skeptical. That's just the way that she is. She's a, uh, she's a, uh, what she, what is she, uh, she's a Scorpio. So right away, she was skeptic, skeptical, and she was like, well, you know that, you know, you you just can't go off of last names and. A lot of people have this last name, and she was correct. I agree. As a researcher, I agree. I just couldn't run with the last name. And mind you, I haven't really read all the book yet. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm like, okay, you have you have a point. So I read the book, and as I was reading the book, and he's telling the stories, some of the stories clicked in my head mm. from the stories that my grandmother told me. Mm. But his stories are more detailed. Okay. Because he was actually, you know, he was actually there. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I brought this to her attention, she just bust out crying. She was, oh. she was excited. Oh my and, goodness. Know, yeah, she was she she just couldn't wow. um wow. She, just, she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe it. And um um from that point forward, I still wasn't satisfied. Like I'm I, I love researching. I still wasn't satisfied because uh, when you read the story, um he tells you that he was born in um, Charles, uh, Charlottesville, Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay. And um, he, his, his father was supposedly the slave master. Mm. And his mother name was, Lu, na, uh, his mother, he didn't give a name for his mother in the book because that, that posed a problem to me because I wanted to, I wanted to search his mother line back to where mm-hmm. she came from. So it was a dilemma there. So I said, okay, he's in Virginia. So I went back to the whole process and looked for slave masters or slaves with the last name Hughes in Virginia, mm-hmm. within, that, within that same uh, region that he was in. So this led me to the plantation of Thomas Jefferson. Mm. It's called Monticello Plantation. Monticello, still- yes. I got the book. I have just I got yes. the book too. I gotta read that one too. Right? It's, it's still there today. Yeah. Yes, it's still there today. It's still wow. there today. And um, you can go take I'm I'm planning on taking the tour there. Um that, that plantation is known for uh the landscape, how mm. beautiful the, the landscape is. And to come to find out that the orchards and the trees and the gardens you see there. Are the exact same gardens that my great father mm-hmm. Morley Warmly Hughes planted. Oh my goodness! He was the head. He was the head gardener there. Hard enough. For those who just joined us, I tell we on the line. Sometimes you don't know where you're going. You just gotta walk one foot in front of the next and and trust the creator. We on the line with J C Hughes, and I met him just because sequence of events and doing these slave narratives and he's excited about slave narratives and 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 i think i hope that it brings to those who are listening the value even if we don't know right away that is our family just to know that what has happened so we can kind of like get our bearings and our understanding and that slavery is not just this broad brush that we like to brush it with and then forget about the not so nice details it can really help in our healing process as a people. So I want to thank you for joining us. And like I said, I'm just like, this is the first time I'm hearing the full story. So I'm, I'm there with you guys like, what? So tell, tell us about Fountain Hughes, because I want to tell you something. Fountain. Okay. Fountain Hughes. I, I, I was speaking of, I don't know, this is his great uncle now, right? However many times we move, and I and I just want, and you see it on Facebook years ago. I shared because what he said, I didn't even know when you sent me the the link. I was like, wait a minute, I already heard this when he was talking about don't um, borrow on credit, don't lend, don't you know, yeah. don't buy on time. And I would tell yeah. people like, yo, this old, you know, this old, he used to be a slave, and he was telling y'all don't buy on time. And I was repping old Fountain Hughes. I didn't even know he was your family. You see that? So tell yeah. us. About, I just liked his voice. He was he was just so yeah. calm and reactive. Yeah, I, I love his, his voice. I, I have his voice down pat. 
I have yeah. a voice down pat. When you come <laughs> on, when you come on, he said, My name is Founding Hughes. Yes. <laughs> I was born in Charleville, Virginia. Yes. I'm 101 years One old. Year ago. Mm -hmm. And my great grandfather died when he was 115 years old. Yes. So yeah, he I was 101 years old. The link. the link, I'm yes. sorry, the link is in the box. So go ahead and listen to that. If you are not aware of what we're talking about, I, what it was, the Library of Congress, they recorded the voices. They did a huge project. Um, I have one of the books. It's called Weebles in the Wheat. Um, and when you told me his name, I started looking through the book. I'm like, no, I know I heard this name somewhere before. And so there's so much history, firsthand account of the slaves. But I'm going to finish. I'm going to let you go ahead and tell us about Fountain Hughes. Uh, and if you haven't heard him, you guys go ahead and listen. He has some good advice for us. Right. Um, the project you speak, you're speaking of, um, the project uh, was in the late 1940s. The Library of Congress wanted to capture um, the voices and the testimonies yes. of, uh, of the last living generation yes. of, of people who were enslaved. So they went around the United States uh, recording um, mm -hmm. the different, uh, different slaves. At this time, my uncle Fountain was staying in, uh, in in Baltimore, I believe. He was staying in Baltimore, and um, they found him and they, and they recorded him. Um, the way I came, the way I came to found, uh, find it, when I found it, um, I did my research again. I went, uh, I, I, I saw, I saw a story on CNN, Black History Month, and it was talking about this project, and it was saying how in the Library of Congress. They have actual handwritten letters mm. that that certain slaves and uh, free black people will write to their families. They have like actual letters. Wow. Thousands this upon, DC? Yes, mm. they have thousands. A thou, they have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of these letters of personal letters. Wow. That, uh, that slaves and ex-slaves were writing uh, to their to their families. I mean, thousands of them. The the guy. Um, in the video show like the archive. I mean, as far as the eye can see, mm. you know, all type of stuff. So uh, one of the good things I heard um, in that show was that sometime in the future, in the near future, I think maybe like a couple of years out now, they're gonna uh, put those uh, those uh, letters online yes. uh, in, digital, in digital format. Mm. It's gonna be open to the public and you can go- And uh, check it out. You, yeah, you can get it online. So I can't wait till they come out. I'm gonna be all over it. <laughs> but um, but no, I went to the Library of Congress website, and I typed in Fountain Hughes. No, I typed in Hughes, mm -hmm. and Fountain and Fountain Hughes popped up. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking in my head, I still have my grandma voice in my head saying, "There's a lot because he had the same last name." Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to <laughs> indicate to you. So I said, "Okay, okay, grandma, got you in my head." I said, "Let me listen to what he had to say." So when I listened to his recording, and he said that uh, that his 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 grandparents were slaves to Thomas Jefferson, I heard I said, that. There you go. <laughs> I said bingo, <laughs> bingo, there you go, there go, bingo. That's the connection. Mm -hmm. Now, now with with uh, with Wormley Hughes, no, going back, going back to Lewis Hughes, I was trying to find his uh, maternal line through his mother. Okay. Cause she would have been she would have been the Hughes, right? He got his last name from her because his slave master was named John Martin, so it couldn't it couldn't have been him. Mm -hmm. His last name would have been uh, Lewis Martin, but it wasn't. Right. That's why I'm, that's why I'm skeptical of whether or not that was his actual father. Mm. Cause he would have had the last name Martin. If the slave master, you know, and I was reading about that whole thing that sometimes the slave women, the enslaved women wouldn't implicate the uh, father of the child, especially if it was through, you know, crossbreeding, as you would say. And so sometimes they will hold on to the name of that man um, so as not to bring him forward. And I was just reading that some, through some other slave narratives. So like you're saying, there might be some customary things involved as to why, you know, um, some cultural things that were existing in that day. Very, very interesting stuff. For those who just joined us, we are with J.C. Hughes. Y'all, If y'all didn't hear the beginning, when we're done, you got to go back. So so tell us where you are today um, with the whole thing and the research and the reading. You read a lot of narratives. Um, 
um, as what you were telling me earlier. How, how do you feel about it? Has it helped you in your own mm -hmm. personal walk? Like, can you share with the people the value or not of, of really investing your time and energy into these things? Yes. Um, on a personal note, it helped me a lot. It gave me a broader um, and non-biased understanding mm -hmm. about what took place. Like, mm -hmm. the slave narratives are really, um, they have categories. Yes. You read one, narr you read, you read one narrative, they go over, like, day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Then it would go over, like, religious, you know, saying religious practices and customs. You know, then it would go over um, uh, where the slave was at during the time of emancipation. Right. How do they feel? How do they hear about it? Mm -hmm. um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they, the interviewers and the people were asking great questions. Yeah. And they were getting, they were getting honest answers. You know, a lot of the slaves felt like, hey, I'm old, I'm about to die. I'm going to tell anybody. <laughs> right, I'm going a, I'm to a say, I'm going to say what I had to say. Okay. And when, when I, read, I read one narrative and the, and, the, um, and the ancestor was like, uh, the interviewer asked him, um, was he scared to talk? He said, no, I'm not scared to talk. Mm. I don't tell it in front of a judge. I tell it before <laughs> God. He's running out of list. So at that point in their life, they felt like, you know, you know, I have nothing else to lose. True. You know? True. So then the we'll go ahead and I'll tell the story. The book I was reading, Weevils in the Wheat, um, this one is for the ex-Virginia um, slaves. First of all, weevils in the wheat was like a cold word. They would say when the patty rollers found out that they was about to go have a secret meeting, they would say, hey, man, there's weevils in the wheat. That mean, don't go. You know what I mean? And right. so at that point, they had over like 300 questions that they would pull from to ask uh, the ex-slaves. So I thought that was, like you said, it's a wide variety of um, information that if you're a researcher, it's like you would have a field day. Thank you people who went out and got this information. Thank you. <laughs> right. So is you know, there the, the, anything the, else? Go ahead. Go ahead. The slave narrative affected me profoundly in my personal life. It gave mm -hmm. me, like I said, it gave me a better understanding of what actually took place. Yeah. Um, from, a, from, a, from a scholarly standpoint, from a scholastic standpoint, um, <laughs> I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't call myself a scholar. I won't call myself a historian. I'm an enthusiast. I mean, I love research. I love history. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I, when, I, when I found these narratives, I felt kind of uh, betrayed and kind of let down um, because we have so many prominent black scholars. And, um, and oftentimes, well, majority of the time, they only focus on ancient history. Oh, oh, you about to let me break out in a praise chorus. I'm just, I'm just sit back right now and just let it rock. Cause I might get a little bit too excited. So go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, drop it down, uh, JC. Give it to them. <laughs> they, they, they focus primarily on ancient history, mm -mm. and and primarily Egypt. They, they really pay no mind to the other fifty plus countries and the other countless ancient civilizations. Um, I mean, in, in Africa, uh, I found this to be disheart. I found this to be disheartening, seeing that um, the premise uh, for a lot of them during their studies is to find themselves. Okay. And I was, and I would think, in a logical way, if you want to backtrack and find yourself, you would start from the Americas to West Africa. I'm done. I don't I I got to talk no more. <laughs> he, 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 I don't even got to talk. Go ahead, brother. You got it. Um, I don't understand how they skipped over, uh, how they just, just hopped over West Africa and went straight to Egypt. And that, that same thing goes for the Hebrews. Skip over oh, West yeah. Africa and then go to Israel. You know? So um, 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 I found that to be disheartening. So instead of being mad and um, cursing the elders or the ancestors, I said, let me take up my staff and let me be the, the one to research this stuff. Because... Um, the the the, uh, the ancestor uh, John Henry Clark, he said it's the student's job to pick up where the master left off, and to correct any mistakes um, or any omitted uh, omitted things um, out of the history. It's the student's job to do that. We're supposed to continue to work and not be just satisfied with the information that they brought forth. So I took those words to heart. That's one of my one of my principles I have when I research. And nobody's nobody's infallible. 
So, right. um, I mean, I, it, it helped me out with my research. I mean, cause we have so we have so many. Um, I mean, you talked about this. We have so many cliches oh. and so many. Um, I gave it. I gave it. I gave it an actual turn. I call it popular, popular propagated conjecture. Conjecture came. Popular. <laughs> Po <laughs> popular propagated conjecture and popular propagated conjecture means is something that's that's, that's uh, a saying or 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 a, a saying or or um, a, a, a allusion to a historical re a, a historical event mm -hmm. that has that has no no real um, roots in, act in in actual historical events and the reason why it becomes uh, a truth it's because it's propagation, it's, it's propagated mm -hmm. and it's promoted as such, and it and it goes unchecked. Correct. Because because oftentimes the people that's given this information are of high esteem and they have a lot of knowledge. So instead of questioning them or doing the due diligence ourselves and researching it, we just take it as truth and we just and, run with it. And repeat it. And repeat it. And repeat and it. And then you'd be like, it. where did you get that from? And they're like, no everybody knows. And you're like, yeah, can I get a reference on that? Can I get a date, a time? Oh, man, you a hater. Can't do it. I, you know what? I just want to say I agree with you so much in what you just said as it relates to our people <laughs> and, and our ancestors, our foreparents who came before us. And I always keep in my mind when researching that if you already have a, like, a preconceived notion, you can let the research prove anything you want it to prove is what i'm trying to say and so but when we approach it from an objective analysis to say hey and like you said the the last time you lost your keys you don't go back to when they first cut the key you go back to the last <laughs> person you were before you lost your keys so the last place we were was in the americas south america in my case my parents are from the caribbean i started that one but i kind of got to take a plane trip to jamaica to do some more digging but the point of the matter is the last place we lost our keys was here. And so it right. makes sense. Listen, you can get some of these narratives for like 99 cents plus shipping or Amazon free PDFs. All you have to do is have the desire. And you, it's nothing to argue about because it's straight information from source. This is why I think these are so valuable because it's not filtered through anything except for what the writer what they experienced and what they wanted you to know. And I'm right. sorry, I'm just a little bit excited, but I just want to say I agree with you on that because this is a wide open field. But I think because the wound is so fresh, it's, it's safer to argue about David. It's safer to argue about Samson. It's safer to argue about the walls of Egypt because it's so far removed. But when you start talking about the here and now, when you start talking about the effects of slavery and why you are the way you are, now it gets personal and we have to come into account for our behavior. So I think there's some emotional reasons as to why a lot of people distance themselves. Because when I told them, come, let's read, they said, why are we reading slave narratives? I don't want to read that. You understand what I'm saying? So a lot of people today still don't even want to read it. It hurts too much. I don't want to see it, Nimuna. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, that's that's the perfect. I'm going to take that analogy. I'm going to take that analogy. With go ahead, keys, brother. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Do you think? Do you think? The keys, that's a perfect analogy. You know, you... You have to backtrack. When you lose your keys, you got to backtrack. If you don't yeah. find it in the last place you went, you go and you try to um, sankofa. <laughs> you got to sankofa. Or in Hebrew, we said zakar. Okay, you try you to remember. Okay. You try to remember where you got it from. Okay. You know, and even in the Torah, it tells you um, many places that the Torah tells you to go back and ask your fathers to get understanding. Seek them for the... Um, for the ancient of days, for the, the times of old, to get the understanding of that. Understanding. And in in Ghana, they had the same principle. It's called Sankofa, meaning go back, fetch, go, you know, retrieve. Dang. In and even even in the Yoruba language, my my Yoruba is a little rusty, but in the Yoruba language, they have an actual co uh, a cognate word for the Hebrew word word zakar. Yeah. It's called it's called it's called odar. Oh wow! The exact same word. It's the exact same word with the exact same meaning. And they also have um, uh, proverbs um, associated with that word, telling you to go back to seek, um, have a change of character, have a change of mind. Um, that's a whole other topic. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm an amateur. It's deep. 
It's deep. And, and that's why I'm so, again, if you guys check him out on Facebook, if, where can they link you? If they want to link you, where can they link you at? Okay. Okay. So now I gotta, now I gotta, you, I know, I know what you're doing. You're forcing me to come out. <laughs> me? <laughs> <laughs> Look, because I felt like I was alone over here, like waving the flag and everybody's looking like I've got a few people and, and it's like, I, I don't mind holding, let's come on. That's what the left project is about. Literally <laughs> let's read it together. Right. But this brother has gone through the steps. Like I said, I started years ago and it led me to where, you know, I would have to actually go to Jamaica. Combine is a little bit different, but here in America, there's so many records. There's so many things that are accessible at our fingertips. I was looking, I just saw in the news when yesterday, one of the Louisiana plantations are now for sale. These plantations are still here. The, the, the information is still here. This is the last place you lost your keys or your mind, your natural born mind. And then we were running around <laughs> one, what's wrong? Okay, you lost your keys right up here in America. You understand what I'm saying? In the West Indies and South America, let's try to find them. You understand? Right, that's, that's true. I'm gonna come down off my soapbox um, now, brother. Tell them where they can find <laughs> brother JC. <laughs> um, I started um, an independent research, um, an ind a independent research foundation. It's called the the um, the African Hebraic, um, the African. No, wait, wait. It's called the um, Hebraic, the Hebraic Independent Research Foundation. Okay. And I also started a cultural institute. It's called that. It's called the um, the African Hebraic Cultural Institute. If you type in on Facebook African Hebraic Cultural Institute, um, the page will pop up, and on that page, I have um, I have posted short excerpts from the book I'm in the process of writing. Okay. Um, to give you kind of a um, a preview of the book I'm writing. The book I'm in the process of writing is called The African Origins. Of Hebraic thought and culture. Okay. It's basically it's basically it's basically a a cultural um, a reclamation um, of our of our indigenous um, of our indigenous Hebrew culture. When I say indigenous Hebrew culture, I mean post exilic, you know, post um, the split of Israel, post all these things. Um, I'm giving you. A comparative, a comparative linguistic, a comparative linguistic study, where I compare the linguistic, the, uh, the languages of different African tribes and nations to the ancient Hebrew, and to to kind of sort of um, to kind of sort of give the the word the Hebraic words back their original meaning and intent, because over time in language, uh, certain words uh, lose value. And lose the the the, the original the etimam the the, uh, the etim, etimam meaning the etimam meaning the original root yeah. and the meaning of and the purpose and intent of the word when it was created and used by the people and uh, and um and the only way we can do that as Hebrews is that we have to see the Torah in Hebrew through the lens of African people because that's who they were. The Hebrew, the Hebrew language, the Hebrew language is a concrete language. Uh, English and other English and other Indo-European languages are uh, are um, abstract languages. Dang. So it's very important that we go back and do the due diligence on that, um, on that. So, and I also do a, a comparative cultural study where I'm comparing comparing the cultures, the, the, the two, the Hebraic culture, the indigenous Hebraic culture, with other. Um, um, well, the African cultures, and I really started to do that as to kind of um, demystify um, our understanding of of traditional African cultures. A lot of us look at their traditional cultures as being heathen, pagan, demon worship, demonic. When in actuality, when you do the due diligence you study, you'll find that a lot of these customs, if not they um they come from our hebraic cultures or our hebraic cultures come from them uh oh being more uh, uh being more ancient being more ancient and archaic in practice a lot of what we do today ha has been um has been remodified and revised and reformed to fit our people uh within our diaspora 
But once you go back and put things back into their original context, then you will see. I'll give you one, I'll give you one example. All right, give it to um, me. <laughs> one example. Um, I, 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 study, I study West Africa. Like the Yoruba, the Igbo, the Iwe, the Aja, the Hausa, the Fulani. I study West Africa. Um, and in West Africa, and in West Africa, amongst the Yoruba people, you have a system. You have a. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Not. In um in West Africa, amongst the Yoruba people, you have a spiritual system that they call the Odu Ifa, or as you might say, Ifa. You also find the same system amongst the Igbo. It's called Efe. Exact same. Uh, exact same system. So. Um, with my comparative, with my comparative linguistic studies, I found, I, I, I took the word Ifa in Yoruba and I did a comparative linguistic study to find its Hebrew equivalent, its Hebrew cognate. And I found it in the Hebrew Bible is called Ofe. It was used in, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, I believe. I can't call the verse off the top of my head, but it was used there. It's a term that was used for divination. Now, Hebrews might get spooked out and be like, oh, divination, that's devil, that's demon worship. No, it's not. Because when you read in the Torah, it, when it tells you that such and such cast lots, that this person cast lots, that the priest would cast lots to seek an answer from the Most High pertaining to um, uh, diplomatic issues or anything, they would cast lots. What I mean by cast lots? Um, they would take um, goat, knuckles, or even... Even uh, precious stones, like the breastplate that the priests wear, even the precious stones, they would cast these stones, and depending on where the stones land, they would first ask a question to the Most High, then they would cast the stones. Depending right. on how the stones land, that's how they would interpret the answer to the question that they posed to the Most High. You find this exact same practice within the Yoruba Ifa divination system. The Babalawu, which is the high priest, he would cast uh, cola nuts. Yeah, I've seen and that would, in the Nigerian movies. Yes. Back in my day when I was observing it through the culture, I was doing it for cultural analysis. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, the, the, <laughs> the Babalao, the, the Babalao, the high priest, um, you would, a, a person would pose a question to him and he would cast cola nuts and he would seek an a, a, a answer from the various uh, Orishas or the Supreme Orisha who is called Odomare. And we get an answer. He's going into some stuff right now for those who just joined us. He's going now, into the comparative analysis. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but now when we hear Orisha, we think polytheism. We think heathen gods, multiple gods. But listen, the Orishas are ancestors and they're also um, manifestations of, of, of nature. Meaning those ancestors had... Um, those ancestors represented for them different aspects of nature. That's another topic. But the Orisha, the Orisha in the Yoruba language means the supreme or the head or the head ancestors. Listen to that. The name is Orisha, meaning the supreme or the head ancestors. Anybody that reads Hebrew would know what's the word for Rosh. It's for the head, right? Okay. It means leader, the chief, right? Okay. If you read in the book of uh, Proverbs, I think it's verse 81, um, that exact cognitic word for Eurisha is there in Hebrew, Reshon. Reshon, okay, the first, the head. But, and it means in, 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 the, in the Bible, it's translated as ancestors, forefathers. Exact same, the exact same, the exact we gonna have, same. We gonna have to check that out. I do know, I do know just coming from the Caribbean, looking at the word ob, obia, where, where uh, in the Caribbean they use it for uh, divination people doing spiritual things. Um, but in the Hebrew, ob is spirit. You understand what I'm saying? And so I thought that was, I'm like, hmm? <laughs> you know, they always call it the obia man, and then it, it, it translates into spirit. So there are some things that it's a whole lot of, it's a whole lot <laughs> stuff all up in there like this. And we have to be able to sort through it and, and know what is for us and what is not for us. And because it's a lot has gone on, 
a lot, a I'm, lot, a lot has gone on. I'm glad. I'm glad that you brought up the Obia. Oh, I'm, but, but I'm not telling people to go out and do no obvious. I look at nah, 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 nah. yes, nah. not L is not telling the people. To, right, I was just right, showing you that nah. the word Ob is spirit in the Hebrew. Because you know, it's, people it's strictly, take stuff and run off with right, it. Right, right. Don't run right, tell that. <laughs> right, right, right. I have I have to always I had to always reiterate that point. Yeah. I I'm I'm an enthusiast. I study. Nothing of what I publish. It's anything I practice. Right. Yeah. In order, in, in order to be uh, an efficient researcher, you have to put your own biases aside and produce um, impartial information, and that's all I do. Um, but you brought up the Obia, right? Dang. If you read in the if you read in the Bible, and you read about King Saul, what happened to King Saul? His, well, after his, you the, went to the Witcher Endor. What was the witch of Endor called when you look in the Hebrew? Oh, now you got me on that. Was well, I didn't check? She, out. Was I just... called, she was called the Obea. But the Obea, see, there goes the word. I know I looked up O. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I didn't know. Oh yeah, she was an Obea woman. I knew it. That witch yep. of Endor. She was that's, into some stuff. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's that's ex that's the exact same name. Oh wow. That she was called. Look at that. The exact same name she was called. Ah, uh, I'm gonna check that out. I'm definitely gonna yeah. check that I, out for those who just joined us. But on discovering your roots, you know, I just that that was just a new section that just came to my mind as I came into contact with Brother J.C. Hughes, and he's on here telling us about what he's currently doing, um, his family history roots. He found out linked to, you know, but I gotta go with for those who may be just joining us, linked to um, Lewis Hughes as well as Fountain Hughes. If you don't know, check the links below. It all ties into the Lev Project, lifting every voice, discovering the slave narratives, your history, understanding what may be going on, what may run through your family, how can it help you personally to further your journey in this walk. So once again, and we have a reading tonight. Hopefully, Brother uh, JC will be able to uh, join us at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be reading, I think it's the third or fourth installment of <coughs> Alexander Falkenbridge. So is there anything else you would like to tell them before? And, and then he just told you where you can link him up on Facebook um, and the groups in which that you can contact him. He's working on a book. Definitely check out the brother. If you have some questions about research and look, I'm just putting your business out there. Like if you got some questions about researching, link to mine. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything bless, else? You bless, to tell bless, bless, bless. Um, I'm going to give a quick shout out to my RBG Hebrew Israelite brothers okay. in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my brother, Ron Divine Prospect. All right. Very, very well known. That's my big bro. Um, I look up, to, even though he's like, nah, man, I look up to him. Um, that's my bro. Um, my brother, Uzi Yahoo. You might know him as Brian. Okay. But um, we, call, we call him Elder Uzi Yahoo. He don't like being called Elder, but he's older than me, so I called him Elder. Um, my brother, Josh. Uh, my brother Yosef, um, my brother, uh, my brother Myron, um, you know, uh, Elder Crane, uh, Frank, you know, we, 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 uh, we deep down here, you know, my, my, you know, my sister, my, my big sister Kay and my, uh, my other big sister Zap, you know, okay. forgive me if I forget it. Uh, my brother, oh, I forget my brother Randall, my brother Randall, All right. my brother, Kay my brother Kyle. Um, well, we also have. We have a um, we have a lecture coming up here in Atlanta in, T in Tucker, Georgia, mm -hmm. um, about f for Black History Month. It's a um, it's a reorientation of our history. It's going to be on Saturday, uh, six thirty. If you want the details, I have the flyers on my page, but it's going to be phenomenal. And I will be going into slave narratives um, during that lecture, and I'm and I and I'm and I'm going into the slave narratives. And since it's a Hebrew event, I'm going into the slave narratives and I'm showing the public mm. from the slave narratives that our enslaved forefathers identified themselves with the biblical Hebrews. Mm. I have testimonies from I have testimonies from them. I have testimonies from um, from European people that came in contact with them mm -hmm. as like missionaries and chaplains saying that these people, they gravitate towards the Torah. And they identify themselves with the children of Israel. Israel so correct. I'm going to reveal. I'm going to reveal all this information, all the research. I have actual. I have the actual autographs, the actual copies 
um, of letters. The, the same way I went for my ancestors, the same way I went to acquire these letters. I have actual letters wow. um, from slave masters. I have actual court, I have the actual transcripts from court hearings for the slave revolts. You be going in. <laughs> so, Look, Brother J.C. Hughes is not a joke. You know what I'm saying? We need researchers like this. We need to go in. We need to substantiate this information. I said, well, tell them what you called it again. What did you call it? Propagated. Uh, what do you call it's it again? P PPC. Popular, right. popular propagated conjecture. I will burn a fire upon PPC. <laughs> no more PPC. <laughs> we'll burn a fire upon that. We have to actually. <laughs> We have to start to substantiate, not to prove to other people, but for, so that we can understand and be educated in what it is that we're saying and no longer put forth this conjecture, this rhetoric that's just, you know, like he says, I like the unbiased. We have to be unbiased in the way we move about this so that we can understand where we're coming from and really get an understanding of where we're going. So I want to thank Brother JC so much. I mean, to you don't know. I just thank you so much for coming in <laughs> um, on such short notice. And just keep being so enthusiastic, like you give me a vibes, you know what I'm saying? Because this is an area where for years, since I was 25, I started like digging off into my history. So you're about right. You know, I wrote a, a book. I never published it yet. You know what I'm saying? But I did it for my own. You know, I went around asking my grandparents, where you want no fuck? You know, I, I'm like, so tell me something. You know, what's their name? And they, they, they were a little tight with the information. You understand what I'm saying? I asked my father, my mother, you know, start digging off into some stuff so that you can understand who you are and why you move the way you do. You know, it's all about coming back and reconnecting those dots that have been severed over this time. So once again, brother, do you have anything else to say? And hopefully you could join us tonight. So look, I'm putting in there, brother JC, hopefully will be able to join us back again tonight. But for now, is there anything you'd like to say before we go? Um, you said you had something to tell me. Oh, so gonna say it now. oh, that was it. I, but what I wanted to tell you is that I heard, um, I listened to your ancestor, um, Fountain Hughes years ago. That's what I wanted to tell you. I had already said okay. it. Okay. And I just, okay. I, I was just vibes and on, on his voice, the information that he had to give. And again, I'm just pumping him and he's in the link box. So go ahead and click on him and just drink some tea and just sit back and listen to wisdom. He's telling you how to stay out of debt. You understand what I'm saying? This is in the 1940s. He's telling you don't follow these people and try to keep up with the Joneses. He's telling you that right now he don't owe nobody nothing. And if anything he needs, he'll save for it and then he'll buy it. That's wisdom. That is Hakma. Right. And that is his four parents. So go ahead and, and take a listen because we have living history. We're all living history. And I'm just so enthusiastic when somebody amongst us has... He put in the work now. Didn't nobody drop it in his lap. As you heard, he was digging off in the library with dust and everything everywhere. And he was digging off for this information. So it came with work, but it is very rewarding. And so um, until gonna, next time. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to I'm gonna tie the story out. So I'm going to finish the story. Put that more on it for me then. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one more aspect. I was tracing Lewis Hughes' mother's maternal line, mm -hmm. which, led, which led me... Uh, to research Virginia. That's how I found Thomas Jefferson's plantation. Mm -hmm. Now, my great father, Wormley Hughes, um, upon Thomas Jefferson's death, he was free. Mm. But he also had a wife and eight children. Damn. Thomas Jefferson's uh, 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 children uh, ended up selling them. But they sold them, they sold them all together to uh, Thomas Jefferson's great-grandson, his name was Randolph, uh, Randolph Jefferson. And um, my, my great father, Wormley Hughes, he didn't want to be separated from his family. So he acquired a job, a paid job working for Randolph Jefferson so he can be close to his family. Um, long story short, um, he, he got enough money and he could only acquire his wife and four of his kids. Wow. The, 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 rest, the rest of them, ended up getting sold in the long run. And, it, and amongst, the, amongst them was one boy. Uh, his name was uh, Joseph, if I recall right. And it was three girls. Mm. It, was, it was Coretta, it was Luis, and I forget the, the, the last, the last uh, girl. But from my research, this, this, this is where I'm at right now. From my research, I'm thinking that Luis Hughes was 
Lewis Hughes' mother. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's where you're at now. That's where I'm at right now. Hmm. This is like Inspector Gadget. <laughs> this is like Sherlock Holmes. This is, it's so, it, it, oh man. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. One more, one more thing. One more thing. One more thing, one more thing. I got another shout out. My uh my more, uh my bro, my, my more, my bro, my big bro, uh Nancy Chevelle. He taught he he gave me some key information, uh instruction. He told me whenever I had the time whenever I had the time and the finances to go out and give me a leather bound journal. Mm -hmm. And he said, write down my story, sure. my family story, started with me. And working backwards and put it down for my for my for my children I for their children to have he said because you know uh we write our scriptures our story now hallelujah shout out to Dazi well for that because i totally agree that's what i was saying if our foreparents didn't write down if your foreparent didn't write down you wouldn't have no clues you understand what I'm saying? I mean, you would have word of mouth, but they wouldn't be, the way it's written down, this is the testimony. And this is why I think it's so important, especially for those who understand themselves to Hebrews. We're reading the testimonies. This is the testimonies. This is what happened in the life of once it says, and you shall go to Egypt again with ships. Well, here, hello, here you are. And here's the proof. You understand what I'm saying? And here are the testimonies. So please value them. Like he said, pull them down on PDFs. Do whatever it is that you need to do, but at least one hour a day, one hour a week, do something. Teach your children. They have children-appropriate ones. Begin to give them back this his history, not this rhetoric. Like, I found some wild stuff out about the history of Coons today, but that might be for another show. Um, <laughs> I made a video on it, and that, that was pretty wild. But uh, definitely, I so enjoyed this. Uh, I pray you guys did as well. I want to thank our brother J.C. Hughes for coming on. And um, I hope to continue to be in contact and to hear more good information coming out of Atlanta. And maybe one day, you know, I'll just pack up everybody and we could just ride on down and come and visit you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, thank you once again. This is Amuna Yisrael. This has been Solonomics 101. And I pray everybody have a blessed night. And see you, like, in a few hours if you want to listen to the rest of Alexander Falkenbridge and see what's going on on these slave ships. So until next time. Shalom. Shalom.